Hey everyone, welcome to episode three of the Nebraska trip. Thanks for being patient with us as we get these videos edited. Zach's kill from Nebraska is going to be up on Thursday, and it's going to be well worth the wait. It's pretty epic. That's that's the best way I can describe it as I've been editing it. So before we get started here, just a couple quick things we wanted to mention. First thing is Legendary Whitetails has a promotion right now. It's called Hunt on Us. So now through November 21st, you can submit a photo of your 2018 deer hunting license. And by doing that, you'll receive a $25 gift certificate to spend at legendarywhitetails.com. And you can get all the information you need on their huntonus.com website. The last thing is, we're doing a whitetail optics giveaway with our friends at Vortex. You can go to our website, thehuntingpublic.com, go to the giveaway drop down menu, submit your information there, and we're gonna be having that available until we hit 50,000 subscribers on YouTube. So tell your friends about it, get online, and hopefully the sooner we get to 50,000 subscribers, we can start doing some more giveaways in the future. Sooner somebody wins. Thanks for being patient, guys. We're excited about these last two Nebraska videos, and then later this week, we're headed to Minnesota for the Public Land Challenge, and just gonna be a lot more content this fall. The other day, before I left, put that coffee maker in there. My dad was like, cowboy coffee. Like, what do you mean? It's like, no, it just doesn't matter if it's good, it's just coffee. This isn't good. I'm making it very poorly out here. Coffee grounds all in it thick, but you know, maybe that'll just be the extra caffeine we need today to be able to get in range of a nice shooter buck. This isn't for um, people that like to sweeten it up and, you know, the creamy stuff like Jake does. This isn't for people like that. Day three, we're getting closer. Found the spot yesterday. Logan and I crept in here. Got really close to getting a shot at that buck last night. We're going right back in there. We got a little bit different wind and we're gonna do a little bit of a different setup. I think if we can get in there clean, we're gonna be right in a perfect spot. Everywhere else we hunt, it seems like the deer come back in the first 15 minutes to an hour of daylight. It's actually one of my favorite strategies for the morning is just going to a place where you know the deer aren't gonna be yet. It seems like that's the trend that we see, that they're moving quite a bit in the morning, coming back. We're just gonna try to get in there before they're back. I'm excited, let's do it. There's where he jumped up. Right when we did that yesterday. Well, nothing got up and moved once those guys went through. We might have just pushed them around enough in here last night to keep them from coming back. Or maybe they just chose to be somewhere else because it is a little bit different wind. Figured it was worth trying to come right back in here, but didn't see much, just saw that spike. But gonna give this a break. We're gonna get back to the vehicle and then we'll probably just drive past this, go back and just kind of check out the rest of the habitat since we didn't get a chance to do that yesterday. Well, this morning, we're gonna try something a little bit different. We got a real long hike ahead of us and we're gonna go check this spot. It's way back in here and it's this place that we expect the deer to be escaping to from all this bird hunting pressure. We were seeing deer closer up towards the access points before season, and then as soon as season opened, they've just kind of disappeared. So we've got a suspicion that they're further back in there. We just don't expect a lot of those bird hunters and bow hunters to be way back in there. And it seems like there's a lot of good habitat back there. We jumped the buck a couple days ago and that's where he escaped to. So we kind of figure that that's where a lot of these deer have kind of went after all that bird hunting pressure's come in and people have been driving around these roads so much we figure they're just deeper in there so we're going to go in there and at the very least scout it out and try to figure out more about this spot got a long walk so here we go
Well, we got up to this high point this morning, way back in here, overlooking the spot that figured some deer would get pushed back into. We've seen a lot of deer. We've seen deer on this side, and we've seen deer on the other side of the marsh. They've come in from just about every direction, but I don't think we've seen more than just that spike. It's real weird. I'd I believe they're here, but I don't know if on these warm, humid, stale mornings that there's just a lot of bucks moving around. I think if we find them, then we can get on them pretty quickly, but there's just the hard parts finding them at this point. Probably gonna sit here for a little bit longer, and then we're gonna kinda ease around and just poke around the edges of these bedding areas just because I've never actually been all the way over here. Just wanna see what kind of signs in and around them, and maybe we can figure out some sort of setup back in here. It's morning four, so sure would be nice to get on something. It's gonna get colder, probably about a 10, 15 degree temperature drop. That should get them to move a little bit better, but we're gonna keep sitting here and observing and then eventually do some scouting and probably go back and make a plan for the evening. two miles back in here now. What we're doing is, as we're walking through this real slow, just looking for sign. And my one complaint that I have hunting this early versus hunting a little bit later like we did last year is the lack of rubs. Last year, one of the things that we did that helped us find bucks was scout areas like this. And when we found rubs, we found the bucks. We're just gonna see where we can find the higher concentrations of deer. Just gonna scout our way through here. We may get lucky and find some areas where some bucks have shed. That's kind of what we're hoping. If we do, then we'll understand this area a little bit better and know how to set up in here. Now, as far as hunting this, depending on what we find, we may be able to come right back tomorrow or we just give it a couple days and come back. But scouting something like this where we don't feel like there's a lot of hunting pressure, even if we bump deer, we feel like there's gonna be more that come back in here. Even if we bump a specific buck, if this area is not being pressured very much other than us coming through here one time, making a quick loop and scouting, then we feel like another buck or the same one's gonna come right back. It's how we eventually got to the one that we shot last year, and it's also how we ran into the majority of the bucks that we found. It's just doing this boot scouting. I think we might have finally found what we came in here scouting for. And that's some rubs, and they look like pretty good ones. It's obvious that they're concentrated in this area, and those rubs are exactly what we wanted to find. Let's go check them out. And dude, that's still wet. Like that could have been this morning. Fresh rubs. That gets me pretty fired up. What about you? Well, Logan and I are taking these gillies off. We got a long way back to the car. We kind of accomplished our goal today, and that was just to scout out this area. I think we're gonna come in here and hunt those rubs and those trails that the rubs are on. At some point, we're starting to just very slowly narrow it down. Now that they're just starting to shed their velvet, they're gonna leave more sign, like those rubs, and the scrapes are gonna start popping up as well. Once we find that, we know bucks are frequenting an area, and then we can start to figure out a game plan of how to hunt it. walk. 
walking down to the left, kind of away into the left. That's that one we jumped. I think we can get low, and then once we get down to the bottom, we'll be able to stand up, walk around the edge of this. By the time we get to the other side of it, should be out of this field. right, and get up to the top, and then we'll have plenty to work with to stay out of sight. situation is, so we watched that buck, we moved, and now we don't know where he is. It's 1220, and here are the issues that are at hand. One, we don't have water. Two, we don't know where he is, exactly. But, we do know that he's right down here below us somewhere, not that far away. The other issue is, is that if we want to come back here and hunt him tonight, the wind is switching. I'm totally stressed out about it. I don't want to leave this deer. If I had a gallon of water sitting here, you bet your butt I'd be sitting here the whole rest of the day. If we don't drink any water, we're going to be pretty much sick from dehydration. All right. I guess we got to leave. But know that I'm sour about it. Lots of brows right in the bed. Incredible intelligence. Oh, there they go. <laughs> prediction for this morning. I think we're going to see a lot of deer. Just hope that we can get into the right spot. It's like, I think with those ghillie suits, if we can just get on a decent deer trail that goes right into that patch, we can move on them. Well, last night we uh, decided to take a little bit of a break, get some work done. And this morning we're going to go back in after that buck that Logan and I saw yesterday morning, late into the morning. We found his rubs, and we saw where he was bedded. So we're gonna get right on top of that bed that he was on. We got a north wind, which is different than yesterday, but it should still set up well for them to bed there. It should be coming over the sand hills, and hopefully they'll be bedded looking down towards the marsh today. Another long walk, but I feel like it's probably worth it. Probably gonna bump into some deer, but we feel like it's worth the risk because Seems like that's the spot they want to be. He's right there, Greg. He's right there. Right there. Up. Yeah. It's him for sure. Right, that's true. 
and we're easing in, we started bumping into some does. We started easing in and I looked up and he was 40 yards from us. It seemed like it was going to be a mistake, but I actually think it helped us because if we'd have been here 20 minutes earlier or even a half hour earlier, we might have ran right over him. I just saw his tail sticking up and then I saw him pick his head up and I could tell it was that buck right away. He was only 40 yards away. And we think we can stay low enough. We're kind of on the side of the hill, down the low spot. We can just ease up there. We can be looking for his body or his antlers or his tail, whatever. I don't know. I think we might just have to ease in there and just set him out and wait. Just get to a point. I'm just afraid he's going to bend just slightly enough different spot that I don't want to bump into him. Well, that's not really what we expected to happen there. We thought he went up further to the left, and somehow he got past us. We were glassing every few steps there. And somehow he just got over to the right and he saw us. He ran up into the patch where he found the rubs yesterday and where we saw him from. And he didn't smell us, but he just, he did see us, obviously. I don't know how far he's going to go. I don't know if it's worth going after him or setting up here if there's other bucks. My downfall is, is we haven't seen any other bucks back here. It's just him and some spikes and does. It makes the fourth time we've bumped into him. The first time Logan and I were driving in, about a, honestly, probably a mile from here, checking an access point, and him and another buck ran away. We saw him yesterday morning, and then this encounter this morning. Some people like to have a lot of history with them, but I don't like to have any history with them. That's way too much for me. Sure wish we could have ended it this morning. Oh well, it's part of hunting. He sure looks good when he runs away. <laughs> well, since we spooked that buck, to keep our spirits high, Greg and I decided we're just gonna have a little dance party up here. Breaks. <laughs> Don't break spirits, break moves. <laughs> THP. <laughs> just gotta stay positive. Have a little dance party. You know what else you gonna do? Think you always shuffle. <laughs> is that what this is? I don't even know if this is such a such a horrible come up with. Such a horrible dance move. Well, as soon as I saw that buck, I threw on some face paint, and I think I realized what our problem was and why he saw us. This face paint, what they've done with this is they've put a hunks only side on there. See that black color? And then this side is the dweeb side. And I messed up and I put the dweeb side on. I think if I would have just blacked out and they probably would have never seen me. I don't know, maybe not even black out, maybe just like, maybe some shapes, maybe some like tribal looking stuff. Maybe if we could have like, put our initials in our face or, I guess we're gonna have to practice once we get back and, and we'll probably end up using this whole, this whole black side just practicing in the mirror, making sure that we look all right. You can tell it's not even used, that was the mistake I made. <laughs> Whoops.